thing that inspired you initially? Um, I got fed up with my uh, painting lecturer, and I don't, and I also was a bit nervous about going through the fine arts sort of school, sc sculpture area at, at art school in Christchurch, which is you know what, where I was attending at the time. And so I thought, well, I'll just, I wasn't really inspired, it was more a reaction. I thought, oh, well, I'll try out a bit of animation and film for a year and see how it goes, and then I'll get back to what I really want to do, which was painting. I'm still waiting to get back to it. Well, I started out acting in my own films. So what I would do, what would happen was, I would ask someone if they wouldn't mind doing something, and in some cases, they did mind doing it. And understandably so, in one case, it was in the middle of winter, walking across a frozen lake, naked uh, and breaking through the ice bare feet well the actor surprise surprise didn't show up so you know I stripped off and went and did it myself and I went in there in about 1978 or the Christmas of 77 77 78 and uh, I parked in a van just down from Ruatahuna which I was sleeping in and this I was you know, I hadn't really, I, I wanted to see what remained of a sort of more, what remained in the sort of more rural areas of sort of, sort of, some of the old traditions, see what remained. And um, I hadn't, I didn't know really where to start, so I just hopped in my van and headed north and got to Ruatahuna, which I, you, obviously it's, you know, more traditional in that Maori, still spoken there and so on. And I parked by a creek and this big, this very large Maori man, broad of girth, came up to me and he said, oh, I wouldn't drink any water from the creek there, there's a dead cow just up, just up further. And he said, why don't you come and have a kai with the cook, me and the cook. And I thought, oh, he's got a cook. He employs a cook, okay, and of course it was his wife. and. And so that's sort of really where it started. And after, you know, people were watchful but friendly. And I'd just travel from one place to another and I'd give people lifts and help them out if I could and they'd help me out and just... So I got to know a few different people, um, not just in Tuhoi. I stayed at Eva, Rag Eva Rickard's place. I stayed at, I think I stayed a night at Bastion Point when that was happening. Um, one elderly woman who I'd given a lift to from Waiohau well, um, suggested I suggested a number of women who who she knew old elderly women and said why don't I meet them and then she said and I went and saw them and then she said oh there's one woman you wouldn't want to meet the burdened one I went ah so I went out and saw her and she seemed very much the real McCoy, you know, like things hadn't really changed a lot. The way she sat was still the way the old people sat at that time. They didn't sit in chairs. They didn't like sitting in chairs, a lot of the, a lot of the women. They sat on their haunches. She did kind of cares over everything, you know, prayers over everything. And so I, you know, I kept going and seeing her. By this stage, I'd given up on a film. I mean, I'd asked advice of different people like John Rungihau, who was one of the main leaders of Tuhoi at that time. And he'd directed me in a few different directions and been supportive. But I'd pretty much given up hope. Um, I, but I kept seeing the old lady. And and we grew, grew kind of friendly. And then one day, after about six different visits, I suddenly noticed she had this son who was about 230 pounds. Huge guy, man-child son. A sort of trust built. And I'd also repair things for her because I kept a toolkit in the car. And I'd give her lifts into town. and. I'd go in there with the with the son, and the son would sit in the front seat, and he'd um, and he'd direct me. He'd be going like this all the way, or like that, or like this. So he'd be my co-pilot, and the old lady'd be in the back, and she'd be praying the whole journey. <laughs> so it was sort of like the Holy Trinity: me, Nikki, and the old lady. Her doing the spiritual support in the back, me taking directions from my co-pilot on the left. And then the one time she sat in the front, she had a problem with technology or of any sort. Um, she wrapped the safety belt around her neck, so if we had actually stopped, she would have been decapitated. 
but she preferred to sit in the squatting in the back praying the whole trip. I mean, because there's this whole thing about cutting hair, it's meant to be kind of sacred and you're only meant to do it in daytime and so on for traditional and traditional Maoridom. Um, she's actually praying a lot of the time. She looks like she's reading a comic, which I don't think it's in the film, but for some of the time the comic was actually upside down she was reading and because she wasn't reading it and she was praying the whole time because it's sort of, you know, got this thing about cutting hair. And, but the thing I like about the scene is she does this, you never think of it for a drama, you just never make it up. Here's this 80-year-old 80, 80 woman and this 40-year-old paranoid schizophrenic, you know, big man. And she's bought him an ice block and she's unwrapping the ice block for him. And you'd never make it up if you were trying to write something like that. And that, for me, is the best moment in the whole movie. But going back to that time, yeah, the, viol the violence was happening. I mean, about once a month, he was... You know, he was on sort of downers to keep him calm, and he'd get violent about once a month, and he'd get frustrated. It's pretty, it's very lonely, and and he'd just get incredibly frustrated, and he would start to smash the house, um, or he'd chase her with the axe or something. He'd never, obviously, if he really wanted to hurt her, he could have killed her easily, but he he didn't want to do that. But he would just just build up, and he'd never normally fully do it when I was around. I'd catch the beginning of it or the end of it. Um, or if I went close with the camera, you know, he'd obviously stop straight away. So I'd never quite capture it. So, but that was something that she lived with. I mean, there was a, there's a story to do with it in the sense that I would, you know, sometimes I'd go away and I'd see he'd smashed up the house. And so I'd repair it. And first of all, I started with, uh, I think, two, two but, uh, four by one, so I'd replace the the bits on the veranda that he'd smashed up with his axe and then I'd come back again and it'd be smashed up so then I'd start replace it with four by twos you know and finally he smashed that too and finally so I replaced it with four by fours and I thought I'll fix you and so I came back and the windows were broken so <laughs> the frustration would get an outlet didn't really matter what you did but you know she was very philosophical about it it's that kind of love, you know, that goes beyond that anybody with a, you know, some a son that's challenged in some way has to, many people have to deal with it. I've never really chosen to be a writer. I have felt forced to be a writer in that I couldn't find the stories I wanted to tell just out there. Every now and again I'll come across something I want to direct that's written by someone else and I go, whoa, great! Saved me two years of work plus. You know, I had this retrospective in Poland of all my films, including the American films and the uh, Map of the Human Heart, which I made in Canada and England. Um, and that was great. That's the second retrospective I had. I had one also in Germany a few years back. Uh, it was a young audience. It was an audience between 20s and 30s because it was like a university city. And many people stay, would stay behind afterwards to ask questions and find out more about the films. Uh, and it was strange seeing these films I've made so many years ago. I think they seemed to have, Map of the Human Heart, I was really pleased with that it held up. Because um, you remember them differently. Uh, but it was great because we won the festival also. So Reign of the Children out of 250 features won the won the Grand Prix there as voted by the audience and that was that was great.